Hello there and welcome back to Nerd Kingdom. Here on this channel we talk a lot about D&D campaigns, but just as important is how you should actually go about starting a gaming group of your own and how to make it a success. If you've been in this hobby for a while or if you're just starting it now, if you play Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder or any tabletop RPG, you probably know how hard it can be to find a group of friends, arrange regular sessions and run a game everybody likes. So this video is here to help you do just that. Just so you have some background, I've been playing and running D&D games for over a decade. In that time I've run multiple groups, managed and introduced dozens of players to the game, and I've run both short, several session long adventures and huge open world campaigns. I'm currently in the process of running my second long running campaign. My first consisted of 16 players, took 4 years to complete, and took characters from 1st to 20th level, and involved running multiple pre-published adventures back to back. So we would play Tyranny of Dragons, then move on to Curse of Strahd, and then run Tomb of, Tomb of Annihilation, all with the same set of characters. My point is that I know just a thing or two about running and managing a gaming group, and I want to help you set one up. So, first on this list is quite obvious, but it's really important, and that is finding the group. Finding and persuading a group to play with you can be tricky. You may be lucky and have three to five friends who want to play. Some of your friends may have other friends who want to play. You don't need to know every player personally. Some of my favourite people started as friends of friends or total strangers I met through playing this game. If you have zero friends or family that want to give this game a try, you could try running online through sites like Roll20 or entering into Facebook groups and Discord chats with people also looking for gaming groups. I prefer this the least though, as people online can be unreliable. If you can't find anybody to play with, sign up to play at your local game store, because most cities have them. Play in other people's groups for a few months and you may have the opportunity to make some new friends and get to run a few games yourself. If you like the group or one or two players from that group, invite them to join a campaign that you're running. Just remember not to be a total dick and poach players from other people's games. Everyone is free to make their own choice, but what I'm saying is don't turn up to someone's campaign after they let you join. Pick a player you like and ask them to leave that group and play with you. You won't get a good group that way, and you'll likely not be welcome back to that group again. The last method is just put a post on your social media asking for friends or acquaintances if anyone fancies a game of D&D, or whatever it is that you want to play. I've been really surprised to see how many people I never thought would be into TTRPGs are actually huge fans. People in theatre and amateur dramatic groups, improv groups are all great role players and natural tabletop players in my experience. Just remember that the hardest part of making a D&D group is finding a DM, so if you want to be the DM, you're already in demand. Okay, number two is scheduling. This honestly sucks and is one of the main reasons groups fail. You have a group, but there are constant scheduling issues. I have one piece of advice here. Find a day and time that works for most people most of the time. I find Sunday evenings typically work well and schedule every game for that day at that time. If you cannot make the day or prioritise coming to a game, then you cannot be a player because you're not there. Now, there will be people who are like, well, that's not fair to people who with, with busy lives, but if your lives are that busy, you probably don't need another hobby. As a DM, you do hours of prep work each week for a session. Players show their commitment by making sure they are free for those sessions. If you have players who don't show up and don't give you a reason why, then they aren't worth keeping in your group. As a DM, you are providing a free service to your players by promising them hours of entertainment. I wouldn't book to see a film then complain that actually that date and that time doesn't work for me. If I'm not there to see the film, then I miss out. The difference is that unlike a film, you cannot simply rebook D&D. If you miss the session, you've missed four hours of story and have to catch up. Now, the same goes for the DM. When you book a session, it's your job to keep that session. 
don't tell your players that you'll run games every Friday if you cannot commit to a Friday. I've set up a precedent where my players know that if I say a game is going to be on a certain day, then it doesn't matter if only two players show up. That game will still go on. When the next week rolls around, those two players will have some cool shit from that session, and nobody wants to miss the next game. If it keeps happening, then I might even find some other committed players to fill the space of the players who keep having other plans. This may be a little bit controversial, but if you need to grow the group a little bit to make sure that the table is always filled, and then prioritise the players who are coming to every game, that is fine. It's your game. Run it however you want, and run it with whoever you want. But you are the one that is providing the entertainment. Number three is the right adventure for the right characters. Finding committed players and scheduling games means nothing if you don't have the right adventure. Session zero is vital for deciding the kind of adventure you should be running. So if in that session zero all of my players are telling me how they hate combat, then I may want to run something like Waterdeep Dragon Heist. Does that mean I can't run something like Curse of Strahd? Well, of course not. But I may want to make combat a rarer occurrence than that adventure presumes it will be. So my players have to think of other solutions. The point here is run or tailor an adventure you want to run for your group. Find out what they like and what they hate and find equal ground where players disagree. Player 1 hates combat, but player 2 hates roleplay. There is going to be both in a D&D session, but maybe you could focus more heavily on exploration and puzzles like a Tomb Raider game or Uncharted. This is also where you set the stage for your story. Tie your player's backstory into your world. If this is going to be a year-long campaign, then players should put some effort into making a character and become a part of the setup. Maybe one player is a knight protecting the Emperor when the Emperor was assassinated. Now they are disgraced and seeking redemption. By the end of this session zero, players should all have a character. All know what the story of the adventure is going to be and feel comfortable knowing that what they like and want from a game will be represented in your game building. If you want to keep your players coming back to the table, this is how you do it. The last thing I have on my list is number four, consistency. Arguably the most important and last point on this list, but if you want something to last... It must have consistency. Constantly entertaining, consistently engaging, and fun for players. Consistently making you, the DM, feel good about your story and enjoying running the game. If there is a lack of consistency of any kind, then ask what needs to change. Combat is too boring and taking up too much time? Put less combat into your game. Use minions instead of low HP monsters. Role play leading to players burning down the town? Then maybe incorporate that into the story. The heroes become the villains? A total spin on the narrative? Consistently delivering a memorable game experience for your players means being adaptable. Being willing to say yes and learn what works and what doesn't as you play. You're going to make mistakes, and all of those mistakes are okay, as long as everyone at the table is having fun. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps a few of you set up your own groups. It's advice that's worked for me. Have a great day, and as always, happy gaming.